Um, there's a little bit of vulnerability for you. Oh, sorry. Um, no, it's good. It's I'm good. I'm going to film this vulnerability. Oh, perfect. That's course. great. <laughs> Hi everybody, this is Jenny A. Hansen at JennyAHanson.com and today I have an awesome guest that I'm so excited about and I know I say that every time but it's just true. An old friend and colleague of mine, Jordan Howe with the company Beehive Grooming and Company and he's actually been in the barbering this whole world for many years. He's going to introduce himself, tell you where that you can find him and we're going to dive in and talk about what it really takes to create a product-based business and like the real nitty-gritty of it and i'm really excited to get into this so jordan welcome what's up jenny how are you good it's so good to see you to can see you ya. please introduce yourself and tell the people where they can find you yeah absolutely so like jenny said uh, my name is jordan howa and i am the founder and creator of beehive grooming and company which is a men's grooming line with uh, shaving products and beard care. Mm -hmm. we, we just built a new shop. That's kind of where we're at today uh, here in American Fork. It's so uh, sexy. Yeah, thank you. It, uh, it turned out better than I could have ever imagined, which is awesome. So, <laughs> so yeah. And so they can, people can find you, let's see, over at your website is? Yeah, it's beehivegrooming.com. Dot com. Yeah. And then or do you have like Instagram or Facebook or anything? Yeah, so um, we're on Facebook. It's just, again, Beehive Grooming and Company. And then Instagram is at the letter B, the letter G, the word and, and C. Yes. So and I will link all that up and down so you can find it and follow <laughs> Jordan. Now, one thing I just have to say, and I appreciate what Jordan coming on the show today, is that he is just such a grounded, down-to-earth, good dude. Like I was saying, you're like such a, just a good man. <laughs> and I have known him for a few years when we worked together. And so it's been so amazing to see where you were with the company like three years ago, three years ago, and then where you are today. And I just wanted to ask you and get you on the show because in the industry, like in the beauty service industry, I talk a lot about making it a good quality experience, a luxury experience. And you do that for like the men for the industry. Right. Like you make sure that the men have a place to feel safe and taken care of and then create a product for them as well. And I love your products. <laughs> I'm going to just go off for a minute. My <laughs> husband uses it and he has a beard. And I mean, even if you don't have a beard, you still have like shaving cream and right. it's like whisked, whisked, whisked up, right? And it's like just really creamy and yummy. Yeah. And the aromas and everything that's in it smells so good. Like literally my husband, like when he has like the beard, the beard oil on, I'm just like, oh my gosh, like this is so <laughs> yummy. Cause it's so like just manly manness. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely one of the points with it for sure. It was like, we wanted smells that made the guy feel, you know, man. Mas masculine. Yeah. And then also made the women want the masculine man. So Seriously. yeah. It's like bees to honey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <for> sure. <laughs> really? Every time he wears it, I'm like, <laughs> so I mean men come on like go buy some <laughs> even if the guys don't want it then girls buy it for the guys do it for seriously yeah. it's so good because I don't really like a lot of like cologne like type smells right. and so he doesn't really have to wear any other like scent or anything like that even his deodorant like an undeodorant like an unscented deodorant and it's like right. yeah. just the 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 products that he uses with the, the Beehive Grooming and Company products is just, it's yummy and it's delicious and it makes him feel good and not all like cologne you know, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And then it smells really good to me too. It's, it's like a, I don't know. I think of like a secret aphrodisiac in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> there. You're like, that's, that's, that's the trade that's secret. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> but Jordan, I, would love if you could maybe touch on a little bit because I, I actually really start a lot of my interviews this way about that defining moment of 
I want to create a, a brand. I want to create a product and making the solid decision from idea to I'm all in and I'm doing it. And what that was for you and the story behind the company. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, so I started with, with doing hair uh, early 2010. January 4th, 2010 was my start date at uh, Fall Mitchell, the school Provo. Um, there was no barbering at that time. So it was just cosmetology. So I went for the whole nine yards and I had, a, had an awesome teacher that taught me how to shave and how to do fades. And she was a, a sweetheart and was, and was really um, a key component to this adventure that I'm on now. Um, I had done hair for several years and about 2012, I, I remember at the time I was married and I remember looking at my bank account and being in the negative, mm. being broke. Now, if it were me, like it's, it's a little bit easier to kind of like deal with that, you know, yeah. when, um, especially for me at the time, you know, being like this newlywed, like a man that's got to take care of and support. And I was kind of panicking. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I had a really interesting job. I was like a security guard. <laughs> I never knew that. Yeah, yeah. I was an unarmed security guard and I worked down at the Riverwoods in Provo. Okay. Okay. And it was Ooh. it was the worst job that I've ever had. Oh man. That'd be bad. cool to have a shop down there. That'd be so exciting. I know. I know. That was it. so like when I'd go do like my rounds, I'd like, oh, I'd love to have a shop here. I'd love to have a shop here, but obviously it never worked out. But um That's like Utah's Ro Rodeo Drive. <laughs> just kidding yeah. or no city creeks kind of gives it a run for it. it's like utah counties right yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um i i'd work from 8 p.m to 8 a.m every day that was my shift then i would come home and sleep for a couple of hours try to get some um guests to come in so i'd cut hair or shave and uh that was working a little bit but it was hard it was really hard work now I was spending a lot of money on other shaving products. Mm -hmm. and I was just like, I really want to create something better. Um, the works better that, um, you know, when I look at the ingredients on it, I can read it and yeah. I know what they're going to do. There's like a point to it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, you know, maybe this will make me a couple extra bucks and it will help put food on the table or make uh, paying rent a little bit easier. Okay. Um, yeah. So it was kind of honestly just kind of like uh it was just a decision I had made to start a, a better life, creating something. Mm -hmm. you know, like, hey, if it benefits other people, um, perfect. You know, job well done. That's that's kind of the goal. Um, so on my shifts, when I was working as the guard, really late at night, I'd take like my kitchen aid, I'd haul in like all my stuff with me, and I'd like. <laughs> I love it. I, yeah, it was it was funny, and I'd have everything yeah. kind of laid out, mixing stuff up, and I'd try some stuff and go do a, a round. <laughs> You know? I used to work on one of my side businesses at another job too. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. When no one was like there. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> that was the only time I had. So then, you, you know, I'd, I'd come up with something that maybe would work, run it home in the morning and try it on my guests and be like, hey, take this home and, and see if you like it. Oh, okay, and, yeah. Um, so I kind of just worked in little like sample things or whatever. And and that was kind of it. Some of them were just like, hey, this is working really good. Like, let's... uh Try it out. So, so you were basically doing R and D and getting a proof of concept, but not completely knowing that right. that's what you're doing yet, right? Cool. Right. Okay. Yeah. So um there were like websites with different cosmetic grade ingredients. And I was like, you know, if I were to make the perfect whatever product, what would what would be in it? What would I have in it to make it so cool? And so I'd spend hours at this job, just like online, like searching and like hunting. Cause like, I didn't know anyone that made freaking products, you know, right. like, I didn't right. have anyone being like, Oh, check this website out. Or I did this. or this is where I found my packaging. You know, it was just all DIY and just kind of Google went. and figure the shit out. Yeah. That was it. I had like <laughs> 500 bucks that my parents loaned me and wow. that was kind of it, you know? Yeah. So um, I actually have, this is actually my first bottle from my first batch of aftershave. No way. Yeah, I, I love stole, that you have I stole it from my brother. He was kind of bummed out about that. But. <laughs> no, that's so cool. Do you, yeah. do you have your new packaging right there uh, with you? Yeah. you could yeah, show? But yeah, this is the new one. It's kind of hard to Maybe see. Maybe do it a little twirl. Yeah, yeah. 
Mm. Oh, it looks so good. I'm like, so, a, you know, I'm like obsessed with black, white, gold, and silver. Yeah, so it's a little different. A little yes, different. evolved. There you yeah, go. Evolved for sure. Yes. Oh, it's um, so pretty. So yeah, so that was 2012, um, and then my cousin who had who had always had a huge beard was like, "Dude, have you ever thought about making a beard oil?" I'm like, "What's beard oil?" You know, like yeah. what's that? And he was like, "Well, just you know, let's come up for something to see if it will help my beard look better." I'm like, "Sure." So I, I mixed one batch of it, gave him a sample of it, and he's like, it's the best thing I've ever used. And I've never changed it since then. No way. And, and it's been the same, and that's probably 95% of my cells. That's the, that's the stuff, right? It that's smells the, so good. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yes, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, I love that you just, like, so just got it on the first try, never changed it, never messed yeah, with it. It worked. It worked. Like, yeah, because it worked. And that's something that's huge is that the market's always going to tell you what works and what does it. And yeah. they're going to be the ones that that are going <laughs> to tell yeah. you what's good and what's bad. And, and as far as I know that, um, I was the first one in Utah, like making like a full shaving line and, yeah. and like the first, like, you know, not necessarily mass produced, but like produced beard oil product. Mm -hmm. 2012 2013 so okay so let's go back with the story a little bit so you get this product you you're getting you're like yep. okay i have something here yeah yeah like and okay it's working it's, it's working, working. Yep. so then how did you go from like let's start making it see if it sells and kind of yeah there? so um every year on christmas there's this awesome um craft bazaar thing called the oh. beehive bazaar and mm -hmm. um they had, they, I, when I was actually down working my, my rounds at the Riverwoods, I had helped them load in for like one of their first uh, vendor like Christmas shows or whatever. Yeah, okay. Was, yeah, for sure. It was like in the fall. Yeah, it was their fall show. And so I was helping them load in. I'm like, oh, dude, like how cool. I have this product, you know, called Beehive Grooming Company. Like how fun would that be to kind of sell some here? And the guy's name was Richard. And he was like, well, yeah, dude, like, you know, we have a show coming up for Christmas. Like, can you make some stuff and come sell it? I'm like, hell yeah, I can't. Yeah. And, you know, like, I'm like, I don't have any money. I got to figure out where to get some money so I can make some I was just going to see that. <laughs> <laughs> now it's like, oh yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, so kind of just um, pulled some scraps together and we made it happen. And it was funny. I had a little like four by four booth. It was like a, a corner. Like I had nothing. Yes. Um, just kind of some random stuff set up. And, and we sold out like the first day. Like, everything <laughs> oh, was like gone. Yeah, I'm like standing there like, no, hey, you have to buy it. <laughs> I'm like, hey, you want to try this stuff out? Just kind of like, you know, pawning it off people. And they're like, sure. I'm like, oh my gosh. And they take, you know, 10 of this or whatever. It was fun. It was cool. Yes, which so. is huge. So for product-based companies, like honestly, everybody I've talked to who have a product-based business or product-based company, it's the trade shows seem to be like the big yeah. thing. And I remember seeing a picture of was one maybe one of your last trade shows and it was not a four by four little corner it looked yeah, no. so professional and so good mm. so you sold out and yeah. then just kept moving forward with it yeah so at that point it was just like i tried to always have a little bit on hand and i started selling to my guests and um i found some different vendor shows now the thing with vendor shows like it's kind of it's almost like kind of a blind investment. You have no idea how the show is going to go. Okay. So we'll take a percentage on top of your upfront costs. So sometimes it can be pretty expensive if you're not too sure how it's going to really roll. Right. But, um, the ones that I do now, um, I do one at the Southtown Expo Center around Christmas. And that's oh, kind of the only one. And uh, Craft Lake City, I do that one too sometimes. And those ones, those ones do really, really well. So totally worth the investment for you. Yeah, I have done some in the past though, where I, I've sold one product to maybe like a booth next to me, you oh, know. Right. So you had some knockdowns, like you. Oh, had yeah, I remember. You know, there's a sense of like vulnerability when you go to a, a show like that because you know you've got your like pretty much your kids like lined out in front of everyone, like here, give it a smell, tell me right. your thing. Right. Some of them, they're like this is the worst thing I've ever smelled. It smells like dirty, like you use like car oil, like it stinks, you know? And I'm like, okay, that's cool. You know, yeah. thanks for your thanks feedback. For, yeah, thanks for the input, you know, yeah. Good or bad, I guess it's whatever. But, um, you know, and then you have some where like a lady will smell the aftershave and she'll like break down sobbing 
and be like, this reminds me of my grandpa. Like, I want like five bottles, you know? Oh, and yeah. Like, okay, that's why I do what I do, you know? Okay, this is interesting because this is a major factor too, if you're in the product world, is that if you have a love and a hate, you know you got something good. Yep. If you're always kind of in the middle. It's like you should probably pivot something and change something. Mm -hmm. I remember when I started create beverages, it was similar because it's like a natural spring water. And I had some people that would like taste it and they're like, oh, because it didn't, doesn't have like a chemical -y taste to it. And they're like, this tastes weird. And I'm like, what? And like, to, then I have other people that's like, oh my gosh, that's like the best tasting water I've ever had. Because really cool. <laughs> it's yeah. so So it's like, you know, very like different. But I remember getting those comments and you're just like, what? No. Yeah. No. no. Sure. So yeah. Being yeah. like so you bummed out. Like, going. yeah, going home like so defeated some days or like I'd have family or whoever texts me be like, hey, how are you doing? Like, where are you at so far? And I'm like, ah, I've sold one thing in the last six hours, you know? This is how it goes. I mean, and the thing is, is that you really stayed very tenacious and you kept going with it even when you had those knockdown moments, which yeah, you have to, you, you have, there you go. You mm -hmm. have to. So what made you keep going and like, never like give up on it? Like how come, how come it never died? Like what part of you just never let it go? Yeah. I mean, for the first, you know, what, three years, um, probably my, the bank account was always at like zero mm -hmm. or like, you know, it was like I'd sell or I'd you know, make some money and I'd spend it to, re to redo whatever, or I'd spend it, have to invest in redoing my labels or, oh, I want to change the bottle up a little bit, you know? And so things cost money. So it was kind of quiet, but, um, honestly, it's like, before I ever created anything or held something in my hand, I literally had a feeling like I had a dream one night where I saw it happen. And so I was just like, I, I'm just going to roll with it. You know, yeah. I was like, I, I felt the feeling of it first. Mm -hmm. Like I can absolutely feel what this feels like already being successful. Yes. Oh, see, oh. That, that's what I was reaching for is that because I believe that ideas or things like that come through us and that we're meant to facilitate and and kind of bring these things into like the physical world right and here's the little woo woo jenny coming out but like oh it's know, perfect yeah it's true because i think that if it's like maybe you have a good idea and you're like yeah that'd be cool but like whatever right. maybe it's probably something you shouldn't go for but i think with a product if it's something that's like in your soul that just yeah. won't leave you alone that you're like i have to do this i right. feel it i feel right. it then that's like when you got to do it right exactly and that, that's kind of what i would do is like i'd have an idea and i'd try to sleep on it or do whatever and just kind of see how i felt not I wouldn't try to like write the numbers out or see what made the most sense same thing with the shop same thing with my guests same thing with my students it's like you know when someone's about to leave or when they come in my first question is how do you feel you know, so, you know, after they use a product, it's like, well, how, how are you feeling now? Some people are like, I don't really understand what you mean, you know, and so you have to kind of explain to them, like, you know, does this make you feel um, like confident? Confidence right. is a huge one, you know? Yeah. Like, if you can make a guest come in, or, you know, if I can have a guy sit in my chair feeling good, but leaving feeling 10 times better, like, that's perfect. That's every, like, four weeks. So my goal is to have someone buy this awesome product and be able to use it every day yes it'll feel like a million bucks right uh, four weeks it's now a daily thing yes because so. you are you're generating an emotion and a feeling and exactly. again like you said like a woman the woman who says reminds me of my grandfather and broke down in tears that's powerful yeah. that's so powerful and and so it, like you said initially you didn't know if it was going to be like help people or what but yeah. it sounds like it ended up helping people right. this i think was brilliant because i was there to witness this moment when jordan was like you know it'd be really cool if i could get them to use beehive grooming and company in the barber class yeah with paul mitchell and i was like yeah that would be cool <laughs> and so I'm how did you that. get your product into the Paul Mitchell schools, because that's brilliant, brilliant. 
So typically, you know, they make everything, shampoo, conditioners, pomade, styling stuff, all that jazz, but they don't have anything as far as like men's grooming goes. Okay. And so I was like, hey, we don't have anything. Like we're a, a local company. I'm teaching this. It would make, you know, really good education for the future professionals. And it would really help out, you know, I think the community and some, some of the people here as well. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, cool. Let's do it. And then they're like, oh, Ogden also has barbering too. So let's get them signed up with it as well. So I was like, oh, okay. Okay, like, so enter the ask. You yeah. asked for it. You reached yeah. for it. You didn't get it all in your head. Like, oh no, it's Paul, you know, like it's Paul yeah. or whatever. You're like, I'm going to go for it. I'm just going to yeah. ask and see what happens, which is like amazing, right? So now, not only that, but now you have established this, right? Like within the school and everyone that you taught. And so if they're moving on with doing barbering, they know, okay, let's get the Beehive Grooming and Company and have it sell in our salons. And so then you can start opening up on this whole like wholesale, wholesale level. Exactly. So you're yeah. like really going, this is awesome. And now you have your own shop. You're selling it in your shop. Yeah. Have you dived into the wholesale world? Oh God several barber shops that are carrying it now several just like retailers that aren't doing hair but they sell it as well um yeah a few stores two of the schools you know now having like a nice like brick and mortar here for us you know it makes yep. it really easy to just like have people come in and, and pick it up so that's amazing yeah. so how's that bank account now <laughs> it's getting there it's getting there. getting there i mean just opening a new shop there's again not much in there it's about even so. <laughs> but I do want to, this is, this is huge that you said, and I want the people to hear this, is that you started with the idea in 2012. 12. It is today, 2017. So like this whole starting a business, growing it, everything just requires so much time and patience and just really keep on moving forward and taking those steps yeah. forward. I feel like a lot of people get discouraged and they just stop, you know? <laughs> There's nothing like a text or an email from someone being like, so I clicked on this button and it, like, you know, closed down my computer or something like that. You're like, like, no! Yeah. <laughs> kind of like scramble, like get something fixed up. That's always fun. But those are like the real behind the scenes moments of like having a product yeah. that you would never know, like happen, that happen. That's what's cool too. It's like, it's kind of like fun not having people know like some of the back end stuff for real right yeah because then you can be like hey remember that one time when this was all perfect <laughs> yeah what that iceberg looked like below the surface like, right. you have, oh yeah you lose your mind totally <laughs> like one of my like my favorite moments was like i had this woman order a couple of cases and i didn't know what shipping was gonna be and so i was like you know, I'll just, yeah, like free shipping it was for an event, you know, and I like, was hand labeling all everything because I didn't want my manufacturer to screw up the labels. Hence I'm out like a case, even if I lost 10% of my inventory, it would have been a major hit. A so I was like hand labeling, doing everything like highly perfect. Right. And then, um, and then by the time I got finished with her order, I had to ship it. She had to have it by a certain date. And they're like, oh, it's going to be like $350. <laughs> and that was. <laughs> yeah. So I had to spend. She doesn't know this. Like, but I remember I had to spend like, so I basically lost like, you For know, sure. 200 bucks on that. <laughs> yeah. But it's a great story. <laughs> it was a good learning moment. Yeah. yeah hopefully lesson learned on that one. Right. So I don't know. I think Jordan should be vlogging all the behind the scenes and like be documenting his journey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, just say. <laughs> yeah, just ask some of the people like my family that have been around me for this adventure. They'd be like, oh man, <laughs> the train wreck. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's intense, but it's, it's fun. You know, it's worth it. And just, I know like my products, not like my end goal, the shops, not even like my end goal. You know, we, we built the shop. It, we had our opening day um, three weeks ago today, actually. And, um, you know, that, that day when it finished and I walked in for the first time, just being like, how can we expand it? Okay, where can I build another one? Let's do this, you know? Yes. 
So it was just like, oh man. The true blue entrepreneur right there. What's next? Keep growing because it's the journey. It's the journey. Yeah. It's the yeah. journey. Like that's our high, you know? So Jordan, thank you so much for coming on the yeah, show. Thank you. It's been an honor. Seriously. Thank no, it's amazing just to see how far you've come and like, I'm so excited to see what else is to come and how that grows in the future. Do you have any, um, ad advice or words of encouragement or maybe something motivational or something for anybody, the viewers watching that maybe have an idea of a product that they really want to start or they're in the beginning phases. Like any advice for that entrepreneur in the product-based mm -hmm. industry? Yeah. So, um, I think one of the first ones, and I think it's one that's probably affected me the most, like emotionally, positively and negatively. And that's starting off being like, I need someone to help me do this. I can't do this unless I have help. I can't do this unless I've got someone like a partner, if I've got this or if I need, I need someone else. And really like through like my journey and like, you know, healing and stuff like that and kind of just what I've learned. It's just like, I'm more than happy and more than capable of doing this by myself. You know, I choose to allow people into my space because I'm ready for that. And I know that they are too, you know? So that's huge is that I can, I'm capable. I don't need to lean on someone yep. because I definitely really you know that feeling of like, can't do it. I don't know what I'm doing, but that's part mm -hmm. of the journey. That's part of the growing. Right? right. Um, what about for, let's see, I kind of like, I can feel. Hmm. Maybe somebody who, has like had the idea of like something they've wanted to do for a really long time. And maybe they like, will go back to the confidence. Yeah. Maybe they are like lacking the confidence that they can do it. Yes. You know, you're more than capable, but maybe about the, if it's the passions there, you can learn it or maybe something. Oh, I got it. Okay. What would you tell? <laughs> what would you tell like the 25 year old Jordan? Oh man. <laughs> that, that's like how old I was when I started doing it. No way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so what that's would you tell a 25 year old Jordan? <laughs> oh man. 25 year old self me. Yeah. It, it would have definitely, it would have been like, you know what you want, you know, if you want a better life or if you want whatever it might be more money, a uh, better relationship, whatever it is, like you, you are the only one that can, can control that. You know, you can't rely on someone else. You can't blame someone else. You can't beg someone else. Like you have to be the one to do it. You know, keep your chin up. Don't hustle. Don't do the hustle thing. Just, uh, you know, if you've got happy people around you and like happy guests, that's when success is, you know, it's like if you can make people happy and, and really help them out with their challenges, like that to me is, is success. What did you mean about don't hustle really hard. Did you mean just like having patience or? Yeah, don't, don't be a, a salesman. Don't try to like, you know, shove it in someone's face. Like, don't do that. Um, okay. Success comes when people are happy, you know? Yes. So yeah, just be a good person and it'll make the rest of it really, really easy. Oh, so I love it. That's so perfect. Okay. So Jordan, Thank you. That's such a perfect place to end it. <laughs> and why don't you say one more time where the people can find you and I'll link it up. Cool. So yeah, our, our new barbershop right here, uh, we're in American Fork. It's 795 East, 340 South, um, number 150. So we're in American Fork. Uh, come hang out with us. Get your haircut. Um, get some products. If you're not getting a haircut, come and hang out. Drink a soda, you know? There you go. Yes. Um, it's a spot to just come and hang out and, and feel awesome. I love it. Jordan, thank you so much. I love you. Soul family forever. Love you. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing the show. Have an amazing day today. And that's it for today's episode. You can watch this over at JennyAHanson.com. I might throw this up on BeautyTalkingBusiness.com. I think that both can benefit. So maybe we'll do that. But thank you so much for watching and to, or listening if you're on iTunes. So thank you so much. Until next time. Bye. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, then. Yeah.